Hello everybody and this is a continuation of the last video I did. Uh, this will be showing how the tournament I just played in finished. Uh, these are the two games I played yesterday. Uh, I started off the day with three out of three uh, so far in the tournament with two games left and I was just leading the field with my opponent who was white here being on two and a half out of three and the highest rated player in the tournament. So here I needed to get a result. If I lost, I think, then I would lose all chance of winning the tournament. So he started with d4. I then played knight f6. I, again, I play knight f6 to everything. Knight f3. So knight f3 is... A very uh, good move for white if you want to avoid a lot of mainline theory. So if you if you play c4, there's black can have a Benoni with c5. Uh, there's also uh, Budapest, which I occasionally play with e5. Uh, yes, yeah, so you get a lot of mainline stuff avoided with knight f3. And it also keeps you flexible, so you can still play c4 later. So here I played d5, and now white did play c4, but a move which I've had great results with is if white plays g3, uh, planning to finchetto the bishop and then play on the queen side, black can strike with b5. This move looks very weird, but it gets a very good... Uh, uh, sort of performance, in, even in master games, because what black has done is prevent c4 from being played. Uh, it allows the bishop on c8 to finchetto on b7, and it just seizes a lot of space on the queen side. So after white usually plays bishop g2, bishop b7, castles, e6. So black is just closing up the centre. He wants to play, or she wants to play, on the queen side. And white hopefully won't be able to summon up any king side attack because white's king is now committed to that side of the board. a4 to attempt to strike back. And then b4. So again, preventing c4 via the uh, capture on c3 uh, on Passant. So, bishop f4, knight bd7, knight e5, and c5 can be played by black. So, black's already getting a good space advantage, and the pieces are fairly well coordinated, whereas white's knight on b1 might have trouble finding a good square. So, this is the kind of line I like. Uh... But my opponent, uh, Valentine Gaudu, Gaudot, didn't uh, play that. Uh, I think I might have actually shown him because we're, uh, we've met quite a few times and we get on very well. So I think, <laughs> I don't think he would have played g3 anyway, but uh, uh, I think um, he knew I would play b5 if he did it. So he did play c4. And here I play e6. So, as black, I don't want to play anything crazy, you know. Uh, like, d takes c4 is okay, but it can lead to queen's gambit accepted after e3. And that line is, is okay for black, but I'm not 100% behind it. I think the bishop coming to c4 is very good for white. But after g3 by my opponent... We've now entered into the Catalan opening, which is very popular among Grandmaster and club player alike. It has tons and tons of theory on it, uh, and there are several ways to play. Black can opt for a quiet setup with bishop e7, then castling, then maybe c6, going into a kind of a pawn triangle like a, a col or a slav. And white usually fares very well against that uh, that line. So what I decided to do 
was go for a very challenging line where White really needs to know the theory to come out on top. And the most challenging move for White is D takes C4. So if White now plays E3 going into a Queen's Gambit uh, accepted, then he's a tempo behind as Black's had the opportunity to play E6. And G3 and E3 have weakened all the light squares. So perhaps black can just let the pawn go and play a move like b6 and then bishop b7, uh, hitting the light squares. So that would not be good at all. Uh, the main move, which is played, bishop g2. And now black has a whole host of options. Uh, before we go into the game, there's c6, which is seen as a very solid move by black. But I really don't like it after knight e5. The point being that b5 is just inadvisable at this point, and the c4 pawn is just dropping, uh, and white retains a good space advantage, active pieces, very good coordination, and as usual in most openings, white should be a bit better and will have had no trouble obtaining that advantage. So c6, for me, isn't worth it. There are other moves such as a6, which I won't really go into because knight e5 is basically played against anything. The two moves where it's not are the areas that I, was, uh, I generally focus on. So knight bd7, it looks a little passive, but the idea is to play knight b6, protecting the c4 pawn. However, I'm a little hesitant here to play this because there's queen a4, for example, and then a6 can be played, queen takes, b5, queen c2, and I still feel that white has a good game. So just to show, queen a4, a6, so the idea is it threatens b5, protecting c4, queen takes, b5, and now just a move like queen c2. And I can't help but feel that after bishop b7, and perhaps a move like bishop g5, white still has quite a nice position here. So I'm not sure how much I like this. Also, castling is perfectly okay for white, but I, I prefer bishop uh, bishop moving. Anyway, this isn't really my kind of position. It does I don't really score very well with this. So I chose the one other move, which doesn't allow knight e5, knight c6. Now, I like this move because, it, I mean, it develops, great. It attacks d4, so there's a bit of pressure there. It cuts out knight e5, and it is still just a little bit tricky for white to prove any advantage. Uh, now, my opponent here made a very slight inaccuracy. The main line move is queen a4, hitting the pawn, and black can't really protect it. Queen d5 is just bad due to knight c3. But knight d5, queen takes, uh, and the main line book is knight b6. And again, black is doing fairly well. Uh, but the rather interesting move, which I was planning on doing, was knight a5. Uh, so here, if queen a4, check, there's actually bishop d7. And if queen takes knight, what does black play here? Yeah, black wins the queen <laughs> with bishop b4, check. So there's a bit of tactics coming in here, but... You know, White got what he deserved, moving the Queen so many times. So, Knight a5, uh, the best response is probably Queen d3. And now, Black, by moving the Knight on c6, Black can get the pawn break c5 in. Uh, and after takes, Bishop takes... Uh, Oh, wait, I think I've got the wrong move on it. Yeah, knight, sorry, knight c6 is meant to be played instead. Uh, but white actually 
might have an okay position, but it is still interesting. So I think knight c6 is actually better. Um, I think here, though, uh, there's the rather embarrassing... Um, there's a rather embarrassing queen b5 check, actually, so I, I've slightly messed up the move order. Uh, but knight c6, and then knight c3, bishop takes, and after castles, castles, white can inflict a, a double, uh, an isolated pawn on black with, pawn, uh, with knight takes, queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes. Uh, and then with a move like e3 preventing uh, black pushing the pawn, black may be very slightly worse, but this is a very double-edged position with both sides having good chances in the game. So I wouldn't mind having this with black. Okay, going back. So queen a4 is the mainline move, uh, which can yield very interesting positions. Black doesn't need to play knight d5, by the way. There are moves like bishop d6 and a6 and, and so on. But here he castled. And the reason this is a little inaccurate is that knight d5 now... Uh, prevents white winning the pawn back, because if queen a4, there's knight b6. So white now has to struggle a little to get the pawn back. e4, knight b6, bishop e3. So again, white has a good centre on with d4 and e4. Uh, very good centre. So if white could win the pawn back easily, he'd easily be winning, I think. Uh, and also my piece is a, a bit underdeveloped. So bishop e7 is a very sensible move. And now knight bd2. Again, perfectly sensible. It's attacking the pawn, developing the knight. Uh, and perhaps here I should have castled, but the move I played was bishop f6. The idea is to attack the pawn on d4. So, I fully expected my opponent's next move, but there is a stronger move that white has, which is to let go of d4 and just play rook c1. This had not occurred to me at all in the game, because white's already a pawn down, so why would white give up a perfectly good centre pawn for uh, the c4 pawn, which is very weak? The reason is that white can gain a slight advantage with the lead and development. My pieces aren't very well coordinated. So after I castle, rook fd1, queen e8. So my bishop and rook on c8 and a8 are prisoners. Uh, also the rook on f8 isn't very good. White can play bishop c5 and then bishop e7 would swap off bishops, perhaps to white's favour. And also, uh, the computer move is e5, bishop e7, and white still has a commanding space advantage. Knight d4, I would probably take to ease the, the cramp. Rook takes d4. Queen b5, pinning the knight. You know, I like pins, they're always useful. Bishop e4. And I, I would give the edge to white here, just because I hate the black pieces, how, how they're so uh, shut in. But perhaps I'm judging it a bit too harshly. Maybe there is a, a get-out clause here for, uh, for black, but I somehow feel that the more I look at this position, the more I don't like it. Uh, anyway, um, this is a very long computer line, so I don't quite know if all my moves have been 100% accurate, but this gives you an idea of White's compensation. I think he's fully compensated for the pawn. So rook c1 was a very interesting move, which I did not consider, and I really should have done, because it's a developing move, and White's already ahead in development, and me initiating exchanges and opening up the center when I'm behind in development isn't a very good idea. So perhaps knight a5 might have been preferable. Anyway, instead of rook c1, my opponent 
like me, thought, why should he give up the D pawn for the doubled C pawn? And played E5, hitting the bishop. And the reason I don't mind losing a tempo and playing bishop E7 is that now the D5 square itself is weak, for white anyway. And that means that if I plonk a knight there, I can usually uh, ensure that I've got a comfortable middle game. And white still has problems gaining uh, the pawn back. So it was at this point that I offered my opponent a draw. Uh, we're only at move 10. Uh, and the reason I do this isn't so much for me being worse, even though the computer gives a tiny advantage for the white. Uh, the reason I do it is that as, as uh, it stood in the tournament, uh, uh, Valentin uh, Gaudot was on two and a half out of three, and I was on three out of three. And as he was the highest rated player in the tournament, uh, about 30 points higher rated than I was, and currently still is, uh, I thought that he was the only one who would have a chance to knock me off my perch, uh, you know, sitting pretty uh, as uh, leading ta the tournament. So if I could get a draw with him, that would be tactically to my benefit, because going into the last round, I would still be half a point ahead of him, and all I would need to do would be to win, to win the whole tournament. Uh, so I thought it, would, it won't be bad if he accepts the draw, and if he doesn't accept the draw, he's still going to have a very tricky game here. Uh, as it so happened, he accepted, uh, and the game ended here. But I was convinced at the time that queen c1 was the best move. Uh, and then if knight a5, he could perhaps play knight e4. But the computer improves on this, of course, because I'm not a mechanical monster. Uh, queen e2... And here I thought knight a5 uh, prevented anything because if if queen c1 oh, whoops if if queen c if if queen c1 then knight a5 fails to queen c3 so my move then would have been knight uh, b4 uh, knight takes c4 and then after we exchange I'd play knight d7. And then I could play bishop d7 to c6 and have uh, an okay uh, setup. And white would be level on material, but perhaps not very comfortable with the uh, black knight on d5. I'd also play maybe uh, uh, maybe like queen d7 and double on the d file. So I'd be happy here. But the computer gives queen e2, knight a5, protecting the pawn, knight e4 castle, knight f to d2, so white slowly improving the pieces, getting them to be a little more aggressive, bishop d7, knight c5, bishop c6, and here it's, it's inadvisable for, whoops, uh, it's inadvisable for black to, uh, sorry, for white to take on c6, because after bishop takes, knight takes, white can win the pawn back with knight takes b7, but after queen d5, black has excellent piece play, and white's pieces are very uh, uh, sort of uncoordinated, so I would give the edge for black there. So here knight d e4 is the computer recommendation. And then, this is not computer recommended, but the computer's line is, is stupid. <laughs> um, the computer's line... Uh, it gives black a horrible looking position, but keeps the pawn on c4. But I don't care about that. I just want to get good piece play. After rook fd1, rook b8, rook c, uh, queen c2, knight c6. Uh, black, I think, has a very good time of it. And white's best hope might even be to just sacrifice with b3. Uh, uh, and then let him... It will be like a, a Benko Gambit, where uh, white will be a pawn down, but will have lots of pressure on the queen side. But I feel very comfortable that I could draw this. Uh, 
being a pawn up, at some point I could give the pawn back and just swap down to an end game. So that was actually that was all in my fourth game. So I was very happy at this point. I was on three and a half out of four. And on the on the board below me, there was one person who had been on two and a half. So if he won, we would he and I would be on the same amount of points and we'd play each other in the last round. But he drew as well as uh, as well. So going into the last round, I did play this person who had previously been on two and a half. He was now on three. So I was half a point ahead of him. And if I drew, I would win the tournament, uh, but could come joint equal if uh, the person I played in the fourth round won his game. So I was I knew that. To win the whole tournament outright, I had to win to be sure of uh, to be sure of the first place prize money. So I was white, and I was playing against Roman Ismailov, who is twenty thirty Fide and one hundred and sixty four ECF. So his ECF is rather uh, underrepresents how good he is. He's he's better than that, uh, and also he's been known to. Uh, get a few very good results. He's a strong player. So I was aware that I had to play very carefully here. And the time limit, I might not have mentioned yet, it was 60 minutes for the whole game with a 30 second increment for the entire match. So my move was c4 and my opponent played c6. So this could well go into a slav with d4 and then d5. But I hate the Slav. I don't like playing against it as white because it, it just, I can't get an advantage with it. So instead, I transpose into uh, 10 points if you can get this opening e4. Well, after d5 and e takes, c takes, c takes. This opening is called, uh, it's, a, it's a Karakhan, uh, but it's the pseudo Panov Botvinnik. <laughs> so uh, the Panov Botvinnik usually involves white playing, uh, in this position, white would play d4, uh, and then it would be very main line. But I take, because I like material, and uh, what you might immediately notice after knight f6, queen takes d5 is not seen as main line due to the queen gets kicked around a bit with knight c3. Uh, but yeah, after knight f6, what you'll notice is that white is a pawn up, but he has, uh, the player with white, has doubled isolated pawns on the d-file. So usually you can't keep the pawn for that long. My own personal opinion uh, is that if white can keep the pawn up to move 15, uh, then white is better, or at the very least level. If black can get the pawn before move 15, then black is level or uh, winning, uh, better. So I think, that, I mean, the, one of the main line moves is just knight c3, uh, knight takes, and then d4. So very quiet, uh, quite positional. White still has a small space advantage. So uh, a lot of theorists say white is still going for the advantage but in my opinion i would love that as black you know i've got a ready-made uh isolated pawn that i can blockade and white hasn't got any lead in development really and i've got a nice in the center so uh, you know who who is it who's there to say that white is not worse uh and the main i think the main move is bishop b5 check uh that's the most commonly played move but my move queen a4 is I think it's actually less common than knight c3, so it's more of a sideline. But I feel over time this may be become this may become the main line because knight bd7 is best, and then knight c3 guards the pawn, uh, and white can in the main line bishop b5 is played, but then you often retreat it to c4. But I could play bishop c4 in one move. So the line he plays is bishop d7 challenging my queen, and now a simple retreat to b3. 
So I'm protecting the pawn on d5 and I'm threatening b7 all, all at once. Uh, and now he plays quite a sneaky move, queen c8. So what's, white's, what's the queen on c8 doing? It's not only protecting the pawn, it's also hitting the c1 bishop. Uh, and I would have been incredibly annoyed, embarrassed, angry, I'm not sure what else I'd feel, after, <laughs> if I play bishop c4, why is that a bad move? Black wins instantly with b5. Now, the moment I move the bishop, he'll take the other one on c1. And obviously, if I don't move the bishop, he'll just take it. So, that would be horrible. Instead, knight c3, perfectly fine. Pretty much the only move, actually. Uh, then e6, which I do not really understand. Uh, usually... Black tries to finchetto the bishop with g6 and bishop g7, and that way uh, the white pawns are undisturbed on d5 and uh, maybe d2, d3, or d4, uh, and black will eventually win the pawn back. But here he's sacrificing it for uh, development, which I don't think is quite right. Uh, I don't play the most uh, sort of the most computer-like, uh, <laughs> you know, um, calculated move. I think what I should play is bishop c4. And I think this just shows you how good white is uh, is in this position, how well white's doing. Because the best move is knight a6. And now after takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, check, queen takes, check, pawn takes. Uh, white's now definitely a pawn up. And I think just generally just better. Uh, pawn up, and after knight f3, we're equal in development. So I would have this as white all day long. So that was probably the best move. But instead, I instantly took, and bishop takes e6 was played. And that now allows bishop b5 check. So he protects it with knight c6. And now I'm, I'm shimmying back and forth a bit with queen back to a4. So I'm, I'm just pressurizing the diagonal. Uh, maybe I can give black uh, isolated pawns after I take on c6. So he plays bishop e7. And I can still give him isolated pawns, but I choose to wait a move with knight f3. Castles. And... I play d4 just to get my pawn into the center, you know, it, make it a useful isolated pawn by uh, having it in the center of the board and also allowing my bishop on c1 to come out. Rook d8 is now played. Good move. Uh, and here I was really torn. I could either take the knight, giving him the isolated pawns, or I could just play uh, play a developing move such as castling. And what swung me was that it's still quite an open position, so do I really want to give up the two bishops? Not really, but let's just see. Bishop takes c6, pawn takes. You may as well keep the queens on when you're a pawn down. Castles. And, okay, it's an all right position, but... I, I just feel that bishop g4 or even a knight d5 just gives black enough to play with here uh, so that I'm not so sure black is really that wor uh, any worse than white. So, again, it's, it's, a, it's a personal preference thing. It's not uh, set in stone. I just don't like bishop takes c6. So I castle instead. And... Knight b4 is played, so he doesn't want me to uh, to double his pawn, uh, to isolate the pawns. And also the idea is to play knight bd5, so he'll be blockading the d5 square. So I don't do anything uh, anti-positional or 
uh, not according to my instinct. I just play bishop g5. So develops a piece, it creates an annoying pin. Uh, you know, it, do, it does a few things there. And now he does his, he follows up with knight b d5. And I thought I was being very, very clever with bishop g5, but in actual fact, I missed a very good move here. What would you play as white? Yeah, there's, again, a developing move, rook a c1. And now knight takes d5 is a very strong threat. So I think the best move might be queen b8. Uh, and then after a move like knight e5, I feel that white is just completely dominating the position. So that was definitely, definitely the best move. So I should have just kept on developing and playing what felt natural. Instead, I thought I was incredibly clever with knight takes d5. Reason being that if he plays knight takes d5, I can then swap bishops. Uh, and that way, uh, I've exchanged down a bit to uh, approaching an endgame. And I can then play rook a c1. And his queen will still be rather uh, trapped. But he plays bishop takes d5. And now I develop with rook f e1. But it's not as strong as I thought it was. Here he has bishop takes f3. I need to recapture. And bishop d6 looks very good for black. Uh, queen h3 is being threatened now with ideas of bishop takes h2 and weaving a mating net. So bishop takes f6 first. If queen h3, bishop e5 will protect against mate. Pawn takes, and maybe I should just push the pawn. If queen h3, I have queen g4 check, swapping queens. So king h8, queen h4, queen f5, rook e3, protecting the pawn, rook g8, king h1, and I can't help feel that black is doing quite well now, with even queen g5 is good. And after I take, he'll repair his pawn structure, he's blockading my uh, isolated pawn, and he can, I think he can claim to be equal in this position with opposite bishops. I can't really see how I'm going to gain an initiative uh, and if, if neither side has the initiative in this sort of endgame, it's probably a draw. So, going back, I had, I'd missed that completely. And fortunately, my opponent did too. So, he played bishop d6. And again, I didn't want to wreck his structure because I didn't like his two bishops in the centre pointing at either side of the board. So, I felt that his two bishops would make up for any... Uh, any lack of cohesion among the pawns. So I play knight e5 to restrict the bishop. Queen f5. And here f4 is apparently the strongest move, but I was a little nervous of opening up my king so much and leaving the e4 square quite weak. So I play bishop h4, just retreating and rerouting the bishop. a6. And now he offered me a draw. So I thought about it for a minute, and I felt that if I took the draw, I'd, I'd finish ahead of him on four out of five. But then the person I played in round four uh, looked like he was winning his game. So if he did win, we would both be on four out of four and would tie for first place. So I, I was a bit greedy. I wanted to win first place myself. And my opponent was down to about 20 minutes on the clock, and I had about uh, 50, <laughs> uh, close to 50 minutes. So I had more than double his time, and I felt that the longer the game went on, the longer I'd have to think and be able to play more accurately than him. So I declined the draw and played bishop d3, queen h5, 
And again, I don't want to wreck his pawn structure, and doing so would actually be terrible for me. Because after g takes, where's my knight going? If it goes to c4 or d7, he has queen takes h2. And if I put it on f3, he can take uh, and then possibly queen h3. And yeah, I can't really see a way out of this. This looks horrible. If, uh, if say, the rook moves up or bishop moves up, just to give give white a waiting move. There's the classic checkmate, bishop h2, king h1, bishop g3 check, king g1, queen h2 check, king f1, and queen takes, f2 mate. So that would be rather disastrous for me to do this. So luckily I don't. I don't wreck uh, his structure. I play bishop g3. So I've rerouted the bishop. I've got my knight in the centre. And my rook's on the open file. So I'm feeling quite happy here. b5 gains a bit of space. And now I offer the trade of queens with queen d1. And he doesn't take it uh, to my, uh, my annoyance. It would be much easier if he did. Uh, if queen takes d1, I was planning on rook takes d1, rook a takes d1, and I don't need to worry so much about the pawn, because after takes, knight c6, rook d7, bishop f5, and I think the best move for black is actually rook c7, bishop takes, rook takes, bishop c6. So, again... It's, it's an equal uh, amount of pawns each, but I've got the passed pawn on the D file. Now that, it, that a lot of pieces have come off, I don't see it so much as an isolated pawn uh, in that it's weak. I see it as a passed pawn now, uh, and that could be very strong. Uh, also, I've got the two bishops in an open position, and I've got the rooks on the open files so, and, and behind the passed pawn. So I'm very happy with this. And that's what I'd planned to do. So give up the pawn for better piece placement. But instead he plays queen h6, keeping, keeping his options open. And I decide I'm going to swap with knight g4. Knight takes, queen takes. And... And it, it's hard to evaluate this position, but I felt that as I was a pawn up, I should be winning. So bishop e6, and I set a little trap with queen e4. I've got ideas like bishop takes d6, rook takes d6, and then the rook on a8 will be loose, so I could take it with the queen. Uh, however, he stops that with bishop takes g3. And I just capture towards the center with the h-pawn. Uh, I feel that's like a ready-made luft for my king. I've got h2 now to uh, escape with my king. So there's no back rank checkmates. He now blockades with rook d5. Strong move. Rook a to c1. And he can't play rook h5, threatening mate, because of queen takes a8. And that would be checkmate. So rook a d8. And I was quite happy with this move. Played... Uh, with about 40 minutes left on my clock, and he was down to only about a minute left, or two minutes. So, rook c5. Now, what would you play as black in this position? I'll give you about the same time as he took to make his move. I'll give you 20 seconds on this move. Well, if you played rook takes d4, uh, thank you, queen takes d4, rook takes d4, rook c8 checkmate. If bishop takes c8, rook e8. And I, I quite like 
this, you know, being down a queen and still checkmating. Uh, just as a, uh, it just looks prettier when you're down that much material. So you can't take on d4. Uh, the other move is rook takes c5, pawn takes c5. So I've now connected my pawns, and with a move like b4, I'll just have a protected passed pawn. Uh, also, what should be noted is that queen d2, forking the uh, rook and the bishop, doesn't work due to queen takes h7 check, king f8, and I plan to play queen h8 first, but the computer gives uh, the move I was planning to follow up with as being even stronger if, you, if played first. Rook takes e6, threatening queen h8 mate, so f takes... Queen takes. And now what's horrible is that if you defend the rook with king e7, there's a mate in two with queen takes g7 check. And my pawn on c5 is playing its part. It uh, stops the king moving away to d6. King e8 and bishop g6 mate. So you have to play king f7 and then I can simply win a rook and, and the game. So that was my those are my two plans. Unfortunately, he didn't fall for them. He played the safe move, g6. And now I took because now the threat of rook takes d4 is real as his king could escape. Uh rook takes d5. Now, here was a point I thought for about 20 minutes on this move. Uh not because, you know, I was just wasting time, but because this is a very hard position to play as white. You've got several options. I'll give you about I'll give you about ten seconds to have a look at the position. Well, the main th the two main threats black has is rook h5 threatening rook h1 mate and also queen g7 uh, attacking the pawn on d4. So I saw that if I played queen e3 trying to trade queens uh, I was expecting queen takes e3 f takes e3 and then I have two center pawns and I don't care to too much about the doubled isolated g pawns. They're, they're a sideshow, they're not the main event. Uh, so queen g7 though just wins the pawn back. So I can't play queen e3. Uh, other moves also don't do very well. Bishop e2 prevents rook h5 and if queen g7 then rook d1 but queen d2 wins a pawn, rook d1 Queen takes b2, so I would give the edge to black in this position. Uh, okay, so anyway, uh, the only moves that I could really see uh, were moves that I had to protect the d-pawn in two moves. So a move like a3, for example, would just not work because of queen g7. So... Rook d1 was also a consideration, uh, so that if queen g7, then uh, the bishop moves, and I've uh, protected the pawn. Uh, and it also prevents queen d2, but rook h5, and again, I just didn't like this. King f1, rook h1 uh, check, king e2, and queen h5 is very annoying here. So the best I could see at the time was g4, queen takes, queen takes, bishop takes, f3. And now black has won the pawn back, traded it off to a bishop endgame. And I'm not even sure if I can draw this. Uh, maybe I'm being melodramatic, but I feel that Black should be able to blockade the d-pawn, which is now more of a weakness because I don't have enough firepower to blast it through. Uh, the king can come to, say, d6 for black, and he has a majority on the king side. So I would give an edge to uh, black here. 
Also, note that I can't play a4, uh, which would try and trade off pawns because of bishop b3 check. So, that's why rook d1 isn't very good. So, I'm just left with two moves, bishop c2 and bishop e2. Uh, neither one is that attractive. If, if uh, bishop e2... Uh, as you've seen, queen d2, rook d1, queen takes, going to this again. So the final move I had to calculate, which I did end up playing, was bishop c2. Uh, and eventually I was happy with this, because if queen d2, now there's rook d1, and he can't get the b pawn. So queen b4, bishop b3... And I feel I'm doing very well as white. This is this is a good position for me. So I calculated that out. Uh, but the move that took me ages to find was after rook h5, what would you play as white? Well, not king f1, because then bishop c4 and you're in a world of trouble. Uh, if king f1, bishop c4 check, and the king can't move, uh, if it does, rook h1 mate. So bishop here, and now black wins with queen d2. Uh, horrible, horrible move. Uh, but, but again, it's kind of pretty as well. Uh, rook h1 is the checkmating threat. And if white meets it with a move like king g1 or something, uh, then black can take the bishop for free. And I'm not that generous. So that really had me worried. Uh, eventually, I did find the move that wins for white, f4. Uh, while looking very ugly with backward <laughs> doubled pawns, uh, it does give the luft for the king necessary to uh, keep the advantage for white. It shuts off the line of the queen. So now with a move like queen g7, there's queen e3. And white's again on top. So going back, that was what took me ages to calculate, was the move f4. It just looked so strange. I didn't uh, didn't find it very quickly. So bishop c2, and I think he'd seen this. So he played queen g7 instead. Now rook d1. And rook d8 was played. So he's trying, I think, to play bishop d5. How do I stop bishop d5? Yeah, pawn d5. So, bishop d7, queen e7. I'm trying to be aggressive now with my pieces. Queen f8. Uh, and here I was uncertain of the best move. I thought that uh, d6 is actually probably the strongest move here. Uh, but at the time, I thought, he doesn't need to take me. He can just play bishop e6. Uh, and then maybe rook d7 blockading. So I wanted to keep the pawn on the light square just to stop the bishop moving to e6 or c6. So I play queen f8, bishop c8, and now I play d6. Again, I probably could have uh, not played this, but I was afraid then of rook d6 blockading. So I'm trying to control the dark square now. Bishop e6 is played. Queen e5. So again, I'm just trying to uh, protect the pawn on d6. Queen g7. Queen g5, going for a cheapo, trying to win the rook. Rook d7. So he's blockaded very effectively. And I now feel that I had to go in for a tactical sequence with bishop b3. And he does kind of need a take here. 
Uh, I think if he doesn't, I'll take, and then his king will be very weak. So bishop takes, pawn takes, and he goes for it. He plays queen takes b2, and he's still on about one minute on his clock, and I am on uh, about 20 minutes. But I looked at the board next to me, and uh, Valentin had uh, got a commanding position, and it looked almost certain that he was going to win. So I knew that I needed to win to get first place now. So I rather desperately lashed out with queen e7, uh, which, if he takes me, then pawn takes. Uh, so e8 is going to be a queen. His king can't stop me. So if he does queen e2 or queen e5, I have rook here. Check. King, and now I get the queen, and I'll win here, being a rook up. So, he can't take the queen, he instead takes the pawn, threatening my rook. I protect the rook with rook e1. So, I'm still planning on, if uh, rook takes queen, there's pawn takes queen, and I'll promote next turn. So, queen b4, it's a very clever move. Hitting my rook and also the pawn on d6. So also, if I play rook d1, he has rook takes queen. Because if pawn takes rook, he has queen takes e7. So I only have two options, really. Queen takes rook. Queen takes e1. King h2. Queen e5. And he should be able to draw this after a move like queen d8 check, king g7, d7. He has f6. A strange move, which appears just to open up the king more. But what it's preventing me doing is blocking any perpetual checks. So after a move like queen e8, he now has perpetual with queen h5, king g1, Queen d1, rinse and repeat. So it will be a draw here. So he did have that as a draw if I took the rook. So instead I played queen e8 check, king g7, and rook e7. So I'm going for the x-ray attack. I'm attacking his rook and also the pawn on f7. So the only move here that gives him any chance is rook takes rook. And now how do I recapture? Do I capture with the queen or with the pawn? Well, if you said the pawn, uh, then black actually wins with king f6. Uh, because of my stupid queen being in the way, there is no way I can protect my pawn. And then he has two pawns on the queen side. So my best move is queen c6 check, king takes pawn, and then queen takes a6. And black uh, may well win being uh, a pawn up uh, and having a passed pawn. So I take with the queen, and now I, f I felt kind of sorry for my opponent because he did have a draw in this position. Can you find it? Okay, well, let me uh, give you a hint by saying that the two methods black has of effectively drawing, uh, what, white, what white's plan is, is to push the pawn uh, and stop any perpetual checks. So, is there a way you can stop me doing both? Yeah, queen c5. So it stops me pushing the pawn. And how on earth am I going to stop perpetual from happening? Uh, if I move the queen away to queen e4 or e3, you can just take the pawn. And if I start running the king around, you can just keep checking. So there's already a perpetual with queen c1 and queen h6 being uh, potentially there. Uh so 
this would be a draw. I'd probably play queen c7, and then uh, you would have uh, you'd have other moves like queen d4 for for black. And after d7, then queen d1. So queen so queen here. And white can't really stop perpetual. So if I were to play uh, g4, for example, you could simply just... Uh, I think you could just take it. And the queen is blockading d7. So if the white queen moves away to uh, c2, for example, the black queen could move to either d7 or d4. And we, we'd get repetition. So... Here, this is a draw, but instead my opponent went for check, king h2, and now queen f5, trying to get a perpetual, but it doesn't work here. d7, queen h5 check, and the killer blow, queen h4. So my queen is still protecting the d8 square, it's, it's on the promotion square, which is very important in queen and pawn end games. So no matter where the black queen moves to, I'm probably going to play d8 queen. Uh, unless, you know, he does a stupid move like queen g5. But uh, yeah, so the game ended here with him resigning. And that meant that I won the tournament with four and a half out of five points, which I was uh, pleased and also very surprised by. So... Uh, Anyway, that's uh, the end of this video. Comment, like, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.